I think that tipping has reached a tipping point of insanity. And that's what I would like to rant about today. My one regret is that I don't have my must grumble shirt to wear because I'm going to kind of be grumbling, but it hasn't come in yet. So maybe I'll just have to put it on the thumbnail if it comes in in time. Hello, for those of you who haven't met me yet, my name is Dara and I live five months of the year in Britain with my dual citizen husband, Ian, and the rest of the year I live here in Texas. And I talk about comparing things in Britain and the US. And today I wanted to talk about tipping. I'm sitting in the car not only because I just came from a place where they had a till and some tipping advice on the counter, but also because I can't film in my house where I normally do because it's being torn apart. They're installing a new master bathroom and there's extremely loud noises coming from my house. In fact, I even sat in my car outside my house and it was so loud there I couldn't even film. So I'm sitting here in a car park. <laughs> Ever since I have been traveling to Britain, which has been many years now, 30, 40 years, there has been a big difference between tipping in the US and in the UK, Europe, the standards, the expectations, and the approach to giving gratuities for service is just really different. So that's true, but also I feel like things have changed recently, and that's what I want to talk about. I remember going to England for the first time and being told the expectation is not to tip as much as we do in the US. If you go to a pub and you order at the counter and pick up your own food, then they don't really expect a tip. And if you leave a little bit of a tip, throw an extra pound on the table, it's all good. Whereas in the US, the expectation was that you would tip probably 15% back, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Now, that has increased. The expectation for higher tips and tips in all places for all things has really, I think, kind of spiraled out of control, which is why I wanted to make this video and show you some examples. But before we get into that, let's talk about the underlying reason, kind of the backstory of why American servers have this expectation of receiving a pretty generous tip for any service they provide. Why there is such a difference in tipping approach is because of how servers are paid in the US versus other countries, UK, European countries, etc. And it's because American workers are not paid a living wage if they work in a tipped type of service job. And according to this article I found in NerdWallet from just a couple weeks ago, American servers are notoriously known for just not receiving a living hourly wage. Tipped employees in the U.S. must receive a minimum wage, but it's only $2.13 an hour, which is nothing. That is what, that is, what is known as their cash wage. And then the expectation is that they will just receive all these tips on top of that that will then give them a reasonable amount of income. Now, the federal minimum wage in general is $7.25 an hour. So it's expected that when that two thirteen dollars is combined with tips, that they will definitely be making in excess of the seven twenty five dollars an hour. But let's face it, seven twenty five dollars an hour ain't a great wage either. What's really interesting is that the minimum wage for tipped workers varies pretty wildly from state to state. For some states like Alabama, the minimum wage is the same as the federal, $2.13 an hour. And then in other states like California, it's $16 an hour. And in Washington state, it's $16.28 an hour. Now let's talk about Europe in comparison. The minimum wage for a waiter in Europe is much higher than it is in the US. The country of Luxembourg has the highest minimum wage where waiters earn about 13 euros per hour, which is about $14. And Germany and Sweden have average waiter pay of 12 euros per hour, while France is about 10 euros per hour. Comparing that to the UK, the average waiter salary in pounds is 12.05 per hour, or about 15 US dollars. Now in Britain, the national minimum wage varies by age, and for adults over 21, it's 10 pounds 18 or 10 pounds 42 per hour. 
The interesting part for me about the British setup is that according to the law, you are not allowed to use tips as part of the national minimum wage. So employers must ensure that their workers receive at least that base pay and income from the tips is additional. So the minimum base pay is much higher, much more reasonable. And then any tips they earn, that's just gravy on top of that. So that's the law and kind of legal requirements, but I'd like to talk about expectations. What are the cultural norms and what are the expectations of those servers when you go to a restaurant or any type of food establishment? We recently visited New York City and we ate at a restaurant in Little Italy. We weren't that hungry, so we just ordered a bowl of minestrone soup and one slice of chocolate mousse cake for us to share. Thanks to inflation and overall crazy prices in New York City, the bill just for that little bowl of soup and piece of cake was $35. It was a restaurant with table service, so when they brought us the bill, they had already added a gratuity of 18% to that. It used to be typical that they would add that kind of automatic gratuity only for parties of six or more, but it was just Ian and me at the table that night. So apparently that restaurant just does a basic gratuity for everyone. Probably hoping that some people won't notice gratuity was already added. <laughs> we'll do a tip on top of that. Then on the same trip, a couple days later, we ate at another Italian restaurant. This one was over near the 9-11 Memorial. And we had dinner. It was three of us, Ian, me, and our son Trent. The bill came to $86, and the receipt graciously helped us with the calculations of different tip percentages, as you see here, starting at 20% and going up to 25%. While we've been having all this inflation with food prices, both at the grocery store and at restaurants, and those prices are going up, I feel like the tipping percentages are also going up. Back 30 years ago, 15% was a good tip and 20% was an ample, generous tip. Now, 20% just seems like average or minimum and 25% is really a generous tip. The Mexican restaurant I ate at here in Texas called Chewy's also put the tipping suggestions at the bottom of their bill. And while they do range from 15% to 25%, Note that again, they start at 25% and descend, probably in hopes that you don't look that far down the slip of paper. Now let's contrast that to my experience eating out in the UK. I feel like particularly when I go to a restaurant where I walk up to a counter and place an order and they take my money there at the counter, I really have to work to pay a tip. They just assume no one's going to tip. And even with table service, when the server comes by, again, with their handheld card reader, because they're not going to take my card and disappear, when I go to tap to pay, I have to stop. And before I pay, make a point of saying, oh, can you add whatever amount to the total as a tip before I tap to pay? And they don't expect me to do that. And from the way they profusely thank me when I do say, hey, please add this amount for a tip before you total it, I can tell that not everybody does tip them like that. So I, if you're British, I would love to hear your experience with eating out and how that whole tipping process when paying the bill usually works for you. And do you pay cash? I mean, I just find that as Americans, we really do not carry around that much cash. So I don't have a lot of loose change, pounds are so heavy especially, <laughs> to be just throwing cash on the table to leave as a tip like I probably would have done 30 or 40 years ago. So I'm curious to know for the British people, how do you handle tipping in a average restaurant situation? But I definitely get the feeling that in Britain, getting a tip, especially getting an 18, 20, 25% tip is not an expectation there is an understanding that a gratuity is for good service. And if someone goes above and beyond and gives you great service, then yes, give them a tip and you know it can be a more generous tip, but it's not an entitlement. I feel like in the US, it is just an entitlement. But now let's get to where I think things have really 
gone crazy. This to me is the tipping point of being just insane. First up is kind of salon treatments. So hairstylists, facials, massage therapy, things like that. These are all expensive services. The prices have really gone up. The price of a haircut has just escalated to crazy. And especially if you're getting your hair cut and colored, one subscriber who lives in North Carolina told me that she pays her stylist about 250 bucks to get her hair cut and colored. So the fact that those prices are so insane and then you're expected to tip 20 or 25% on top of that, I mean, it's just prohibitive. Same thing with massage therapy. It used to be hour long massage was 50 or $60. Now it's 80, 90, $100. And then there's pressure on top of that to give a gratuity of 20 or 25%. So that means for an hour long massage, you're expected to tip the massage therapist an extra $23 on top of the outrageous amount you've already paid. It just, I can't even. So those are kind of high priced services and treatments and things. Now let's talk about the other end of the scale. You go to a fast food place, it's counter service. Um, one thing that's been around for a long time is the tip jar. So whether you go to a coffee shop or a pizza counter or a taco stand, all these kinds of places, they've got a tip jar on the counter next to the till where you're placing your order and paying for your food. And if you come from a country where the tipping culture isn't like it is in the U.S., that might seem kind of strange because the person, by definition, is not really providing you a lot of service. They're not coming to your table and taking your order and then later on checking on you, bringing you extra ketchup, refilling your water glass, and all of those things, clearing the table. They're not doing any of those things. They're just taking the food or the coffee and handing it across the counter to you or just taking your money. They're not spending an hour with you while you have some long leisurely meal. It's, it's a pretty short relationship. You're there like a minute or two just placing your order and picking it up. And it's funny because uh, Jerry Seinfeld actually had a little rant about this on his TV show. He had a bit that he did. This is probably 20 years ago. Have you noticed that every little place you go into lately has that tip jar on the counter? What is the service that this tip is for? Anyway, I mean, isn't the man basically just turning around? Isn't that really all it is? I think we're tipping people now just for the absence of outright hostility. But the nice thing about tip jars is that you can ignore them if you don't feel like paying a tip. But what's changed recently is that people don't carry cash, like I said earlier, and everyone's paying for things with their credit card. So people were not leaving money in the tip jar anymore, which means that now businesses have gotten clever with the little card readers that are accepting our payments. And the software there now is pressuring us to pay tips, even when we're just at a coffee shop or a taco stand or whatever with someone who's taking our order and handing us food. So here is a card reader at a typical breakfast diner here in Texas. This is a very common setup at the till where you pay before leaving the restaurant. They offer you suggested tip amounts and you choose one. Notice that the choices vary from 20 to 25%. There is, however, a no tip option. But a nasty trend that I noticed recently is that at these kind of counters, some of the other software makes it really difficult to leave no tip. They have those basic suggestions like 15, 20, 25%, and then you have to search out an other button and go to another screen to find a place to hit no tip. And when I'm paying four or five dollars to just get a cookie handed to me, I don't think I should have to pay an extra dollar to the person who just handed me a cookie in a box. And the fact that these payment terminals are making it really difficult to not pay all this extra amount, I find kind of annoying. So what do you think? Am I just being hopelessly miserly and cheap and tight with my money? 
or do you guys think that tipping has gone crazy? Let me know in the comments what your experience is with tipping, what your views are about tipping, and let me know if you are American or from some other country and how the tipping culture is different there. Thank you so much for watching my little ranting video today. I appreciate your support and do something good in the world today. Maybe go give someone a tip, even if they don't deserve it.